Open this door, man, for a huff and puff. Come on now, by the hands of your chinny chin chin. Oh, boy, you best roll out. We up in here with the Mac 10. Oh, I think not, Terrell. I think not. Yo, might need to think this through and stop wasting my time. Because Omar will come back tomorrow. And the next day. And the next day. And I will put a bullet in all y'all behind what happened right now. You heard? What the fuck? Yo, lesson here, babe. You come at the king, you best not miss. I'm out. No. Five. So much depends on reputation. Guard it with your life. Reputation is the cornerstone of power. Through reputation alone, you can intimidate and win. Once it slips, however, you are vulnerable and will be attacked on all sides. Make your reputation unassailable. Always be alert to potential attacks and thwart them before they happen. Meanwhile, learn to destroy your enemies by opening holes in their own reputations. Then, stand aside and let public opinion hang them. One of the laws of power is guard your reputation with your life. It's like your treasure. It's how people perceive you. And if your reputation kind of precedes you, and it can make people even afraid of you before they meet you. In the ancient China, in like the first century uh, AD or so, there was this great Chinese general called Chuko Liang. It's narrated in this book called The Romance of Three Kingdoms. And he was so clever. He was by far the most clever general that ever lived, that armies were already kind of worried before they went into battle with him. Knowing that he would have some trick up his leave. They were certain that he was going to do something that they never thought of before. So at one point, Chuko Liang is in a castle and all his men have deserted him for whatever reason. And he only has like 50 men left in the castle. And he hears that an army of 20,000 soldiers is advancing. And he says, it's over. My career is over. They're going to wipe us out and kill us. So what does he do? He sat himself up on the wall of the castle with like a, a, a harp or a loop in his hand. And he just sat there strumming it and humming like a prayer and kind of singing. And the enemy army approaches, they see Chuko Liang on the top there. He's got some trick up his sleeve. He's luring us into the castle where he must have 50,000 men that are ready to ambush and counterattack us. He wouldn't be sitting on that citadel like that unless he was trying to trick us in some way. And so they end up retreating. So a man with 50 men defeated an army of 20,000 men just through the psychological warfare and just through this reputation that he had of being so incredibly brilliant. And I think a great coach like a Bill Belichick kind of has that sort of spirit as well. All right, my boys, this one is going to be a good one. This one's going to be very informational, as is all of my videos. But 
The title of this video is going to be the long, along the lines of how to build a powerful slash strong reputation and why you must guard it with your life, right? I got this from the 48 Laws of Power. I don't have the fucking book on me. I don't know where it is. But, bro, check this the fuck out, right? So, to jump in straight, I, I, I put those clips in there for a reason. All of these clips that I put in, you have to really watch and, like, really analyze. Like, maybe even go back and watch that clip, right? So... You see, this is a show called The Wire, right? And the dude, the he's not the main character, but he's one of the characters that are really shown. He's one of the main characters kind of thing. And he is coming through a block full of gangsters. Everyone's in there, but they know his fucking body and he don't play, right? He got dudes running. He got dudes, uh, uh, he ain't noticed he was coming. He said, he looked up, he said, oh shit, it's Omar. Got to running, bro, is walking through the shit. He whistling. He's running through the hood, whistling. He not he not running. He's walking through the hood, whistling. They know his body. He said, he, he got to the house. He said, bro, you better open up this door. They said, I'm up here with the Mac 10, all scared of shit. He's like, man, listen, I'll come back the next day, the next day, the next day. You won't stop seeing me. Everyone, the little kids running, the old heads running. Everyone's running from him. They end up dropping the bag of money and all of that. They know not to play with Omar. He has a reputation that is not to be played with, right? And this is where, you know, in our day-to-day day -day life, you do not want to be seen as someone that, that gets played with. The little, little bitch of your group, of your friends, or in society where people just bitch you around. They say all of these jokes and they play around with your name and all sorts of things. You do not want to be that person, right? And I'm not saying you want to be the scariest dude on the block and this, that, and the third, or all of this shit. This is just a mere example of what I'm talking about that we're going to get into, right? But you do not want to be played with. You, No one wants to be played with no matter what you say. Oh, you're the funny clown out of the group. And, you know, every, you like your position where people are putting you in a, a headlock and rubbing your head like a little bitch. No. As, especially as you get older, you're a man, bro. That's not supposed to be happening. If you're the bitch out of your group, you have to get out of that. If you're a bitch throughout your high school, school, whatever, get out of that. You have to understand that you can, after your reputation, you can... um. You you can uh like get out of that bullshit where you're the bitch of the group where everyone plays with you or everyone's cracking jokes and this that you do not want to be that person because once I'm I'm gonna explain briefly but once everyone sees that you're the bitch everyone's going to treat you like the bitch everyone's going to play with your name you do not want to be like that right so let let let's hop into it right because I got some like real stories of in my like real life shit of what I can explain to you guys right but the first thing right. For your reputation, you don't always just want to be the scary guy. You want to have a good reputation. People know you. He's a hard worker. He takes care of himself. You know, he does all of the hard things that he says he's going to do. And he's a man of his word. And he doesn't go back on his word. That is a real man that, in my eyes, a man who doesn't go back on his word, especially, is a real man to me. A guy who says, okay, I'm going to do this. Or I'm going to be here at this time. Or I'm going to do this certain thing. That's that and the third. And he actually does it on a day-to-day -day basis or whatever he says he does. That's a real man, right? So you want to do that. Be a man of your word. Your word is everything. If if you say, take the boy who cries wolf for a, se for a second, right? This this we knew from we were kids. We read the book of like, stop bullshitting. Don't be a, a bullshitter, right? Be, stand strong in your word and do what you're going to say, right? So like the little kid who cries wolf or whatever, he's playing around saying, oh, the wolf is coming. The wolf is coming. Everyone comes to help him or whatever the fuck. The first time they're like, uh, they're like, okay, it's a joke. Ha ha ha, whatever. Then the second time, the wolf is coming, the wolf is coming. Then everyone comes and helps him. It's like, all right, this dude's fucking bullshit. And then he does it again. Everyone helps him come. Everyone, he says, oh, the wolf is coming, the wolf is coming again for the third time. They all come. They're like, all right, fuck you. I don't fuck with you. You're a liar, right? Then he does it. He says, the wolf is coming, the wolf is coming for the fourth time. But the wolf is actually there for his ass, ready for his ass. But nobody gives a fuck to listen to him because it's... He's a liar. Nobody gives a fuck. You would do what you say you're going to do. That's my main thing. I don't respect people who don't. If they say they're going to be here or they're going to do this or give me this a uh, certain amount of money or this, that, whatever the fuck. And they don't do it. It's like, fuck you. Like, real shit. It's like, oh, fuck you. Like, you understand how they said with the boy who cried wolf. Fuck that dude. Because when it got time when the wolf was really there, ain't nobody was going to help you. It's That's your fault. So be a man of your word. Number one thing is always be a man of your word. If you say you're going to do something, right? For instance, especially with your reputation and power, a lot of this comes from physical dominance too, whether you want to agree with me or not. 
being a man, you got to be physically strong no matter what. If you're a little soy boy, nobody gives a fuck how intelligent you are. If a bigger guy can come and just slap the shit out of you, shut the fuck up. What are you going to do? Right? You have to be able to defend yourself no matter what. That's why, like, as men, you should weightlift and train a martial arts. Whether that's boxing, whether that's kickboxing, whether that's um, wrestling, jujitsu, motherfucking Muay Thai, whatever you want to do, bare knuckle fighting, whatever the fuck it is, you should tr practice a sport. None of the, the, the bullshit ones either. The ones like boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, all of this, UFC, MMA, those are the ones you want to do. Those are going to teach you a lot of the things in this real world that will help protect you. None of that, uh, that, uh, that other nut shit. What is that called? Um, where, where they play and like, I don't, no disrespect to karate, but bro, you put a, I seen a clip where you put a, I'm gonna put a, a MMA, a, a, this clip of this MMA guy, uh, slapping the shit out of some, some dude who does one of those like bullshit ass martial arts or whatever. I'm gonna put that one of those clips towards the ends too as well. So, so that you could, I really understand what I'm saying. But you have to practice a martial arts. Number one, you need to be able to defend yourself. No one will respect you. You could be the smartest fucking guy in the world. It doesn't matter if a guy can come and just slap the shit out you and you're not going to do nothing. That would, this is why pure masculine men will never lose in this world. You can be the smartest person in the world. You get a bully, a bigger guy who just comes and slaps you up. Just shut the fuck up. You're, you're going to be quiet, right? I, this is why you must be intelligent, but you must be able to defend yourself. You do not want to be a bitch. You do not want people to come around, talk to you a certain way and, and not do anything. Because once you're really practicing these martial arts, you will keep that within you. You don't want to bully other people. I, I trained boxing for a while. And especially nowadays, I'm doing it more two to three times a week because I still weightlift and shit. But I always practice it and I get into the mode and I actually train. I'm not a bitch who's going to skip out. I, I want to do this. Once I really get this money, I'm going to really do that for a while, like a long time. Excuse me. But practicing a martial arts is a necessity. You got to be able to defend yourself because once you're able to defend yourself and you're able to learn, you know, you start hitting in the bag and you're really training hard. You're learning how to fight really well. You would have more confidence. So when a dude who's coming talking shit or whatever the fuck, he's doing all this bullshit, talking all of this nut shit. Maybe it's a bully at your school or whatever the fuck or your workplace. People are bullying you and shit. You will have the self-confidence of like, I could really whoop this dude's ass. I'm going to warn him. And I'm going to be serious. If you say, if, if you say I'm going to slap the shit out of you, you better slap the shit out of him. That's what I'm saying. This dude talking all this. You say, I'm about to slap the shit out of you if you don't stop talking. He keep talking. Slap the shit out of him. That respect. They're going to respect you whether they want to or not. No matter how big. No matter if you lose the fight of a bigger guy, whatever. If this dude's talking crazy and you say I'm going to slap the shit out of you and you don't do it. You're a bitch and everyone else will see that you're a bitch. So I'm going to get into that. But martial arts is definitely something you need to practice. Whether it's, like I said, boxing, judo. Now, I don't know about judo, but uh, jujitsu, wrestling, um, kickboxing, uh, motherfucking MMA, Muay Thai, whatever the fuck. Practice in martial arts. Me, it's boxing. And then I want to start learning wrestling as well. But a lot of this stuff comes down to mas masculine essence of being able to defend yourself for real. Like in this real world it's it's a live or die like the soy boys that you see on the internet that got all of this like twitter you know their twitter beefing and they, they can't protect themselves so you know all this that and the third and you know they got this voice back then there was no voice for these people if you didn't know how to fight or if you weren't willing to put up a fight or whatever the fuck right you know even if you don't know how to fight but if you're not willing to stand on your ground as a man if this guy's coming talking crazy you're not willing to tell you, yo watch your fucking mouth or whatever no respect. Nobody gives a fuck. It do, nobody gives a fuck about you. Nobody cares. Nobody cares what you have to say. Respectfully, bro. So, stand on your word and really do what you're supposed to do every single fucking day. Two is be strong and fierce. Like I said, if you just see from the physical aspect of, like, if you're a bigger guy, right? Like, if you're in the gym lifting weights stronger, you can literally, literally grab someone and throw them. But... Like, I'm saying in shape of, like, being stronger and more masculine, you know, you got more muscle, this, that. By the person, the the human eye, right? The woman like that shit because it's a masculine man. No matter what they say about dad bods and shit, don't, don't, don't listen to that bullshit. Because when I come through the cut, all of them geek, so it doesn't matter. But um, through the human eye, another man sees another man that's strong on basically the same level as them. It's somewhat a respect of, like... Okay, this guy's strong, so I might have to watch out. That's just how it is in human nature, especially a, a stronger man with his head held high and his chest up and he's walking like he owns his bitch. That is a potential threat to other men. 
and the soy boys are always going to tuck their tail. They're, these people don't know this stuff. They're always going to tuck their tail. They don't fight. They they use their words to communicate. More times than not, some people don't give a fuck if you could communicate well, make them look stupid, put knock some sense in them. They're going to knock some sense into you. Shut the fuck up. Straight up. And you got to be able to defend yourself. But when you're strong and you're masculine and you got like muscle on you, more times than not, people are not going to want to fuck with you. And that's why a lot of bodybuilders, you'll see a lot of these bodybuilders completely like mass monsters that are injecting synthol and that are taking mad steroids. They're taking it because more times than not, I can I can guarantee they're scared of the confrontation. And they think from like taking all these steroids, aside from the people who generally love it and want to be like the biggest bodybuilder in the world, you know, being big comes with a cost of you not being fucked with as much you you really won't be as fucked with as much in this day and age if a guy who's 6'3 and 250 pounds come out the car or come out the way and you know more times people are not willing to fight him but there will be another person who's that size that i'll be like yo shut up before i punch you in your shit and if you're not able to defend yourself you don't train anything like that it doesn't matter how big you are you can you can find you could have someone like a hundred and fucking 50 pounds like me that knows some certain techniques that if he comes at me and I throw a one, two and I keep pop, pop, pop and keep hitting him, he's going to fall. If another person who knows jujitsu knows how to get on top of him, get him in the rear choke or whatever the fuck and not and put him in a choke, it's over from that point. Sometimes it really doesn't matter how big you are. The size of it matters, of course. Like, don't get it wrong. There's weight classes and boxing and everything like that for a reason. But when you're a man and you just don't, in this real world, there's no weight classes. There's no nothing. In the street fight, you can do anything. That means you can kick the dude in the balls. You can do, this is like so violent. I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, uh, in the street fight, you can do anything. No, There's no rules to it. You can bring a knife, bro. I don't want to bring so violent. I don't want to bring so much violent thoughts, but there, it's a street fight. There's no rules. You can do absolutely anything. Poke him in the eye, punch him in his throat, whatever the fuck, kick him in the balls, whatever. So knowing this will help you better out in life, but you have to be strong and fierce. If you're bigger and you're stronger and you take up more space and you're more confident, people are not going to really want to fuck with you. That's 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 a given. You would rather think about a bully for a second, right? A bully only fucks with someone who he sees is weak. The people who you're maybe you you're getting crack jokes. Everyone's flaming you in the group or everyone's little bro and you are yoking you up or slapping you up or, you know, playing with you. They see you as weak because they know you're not going to do nothing. That's the problem. So in order to fix that problem, you you got to really be able to... I'm going to make a whole different video on like how to stand up to bullies too. You got to be able to stay in on business every time, which is going to lead me into my next thing. But you... you bro, if you were bigger, more stronger, more fierce, you think a, a bully is going to want to fuck with you more? No, it doesn't make sense because you're more of a fight to him than a little weak little soy boy or a fat chubby kid or whatever the fuck they're not gonna want to fuck with a guy who's stronger who can maybe in their brain they're thinking damn this guy could fuck me up low-key and they don't know that you train this that you could really put some hands on a dude but they're gonna fuck with the skinny kid the, the the fat kid the kid that they bitch around that everyone bitches around right and that's going to lead me in my next example stand on business never let anyone play with you if they play with you everyone will play right so i got an example from my school my old school in high school right like a mere example that like was crazy so check me out there was this one kid i didn't even know him too much right he was a grade below me whatever around i was a junior he was a sophomore whatever right and these two sophomores were to fight right and they fought right and like you know they were standing on it both of them were standing on it right so one guy they're fighting right and the the kid that i'm talking about he was not to be played with everyone kind of knew like yo don't fuck with this dude he's like he'll really do it to you like even me, after seeing the videos, I'm like, yo, he's someone to be like, watch out for. You know, if there was a vic, I wouldn't, you know, even me, I look at, I, I was looking at these fights like, yeah, he was standing on business. Like he was fighting, right? So there was a total of three fights after school, right? So the first fight, um, the kid, I knew one of the other kids too. He was in my class too. I was a sophomore. He was a freshman and he was all right. He wasn't a bad kid or whatever the fuck, but he had a problem with this kid or whatever. I don't know. I don't remember the backstory to it, but all, but but basically, they're in the middle of the street, right? And one of my one of the kids, I told you guys, so like not to be played with, right? This built his reputation to be garnered around the school that yo, do not play with this guy, like he will really do it to you. After these fights, it solidified, like yo, don't fuck with him. Like other people will look at you, like yo, do not. Everyone was looking at him, like yo, don't fuck with him, bro. Don't play with him, right? So they're in the middle of the street, and this dude comes and spears the shit out of him, and he gets on top of him, boom, 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 start really breaking his shit, right? 
but he kind of caught the other dude off guard. So it was like, you know, you got to pay attention at all times if you're about to fight regardless. But he took his head away. Then he speared him, just started, you know, doing his thing on him. So that first fight, that kid won, the one not to be played with, right? So after that fight, right, the kid who got beat up, he was like, nah, that fucker caught me off guard. Fuck him. I'm going to get him. Watch. So that same day, he goes to the kid's house. And um, basically, they get it in, in the street again. And, and like they in the middle of the road and they throwing them bitches. But yo, the other kid really knew how to throw them bitches. Like he wasn't like a boxer, but he knew how to fight in the street, whatever. So he died. The other kid is taller than him and everything. Probably weighed more than him and all of that. The other kid, he's shorter. He bop, 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 bop. Hit him with like a four piece. I swear. He, the other kid throwing them bitches like they throwing them like he was throwing them like bitches. But the other one was going straight hands just mm, coming over the top on him. So he dodged like two two uh two punches from the taller kid and came with a four piece. Had bro on the ground, everything like that. And and then there was cars around because I told you they in the middle of the street. They didn't give a fuck. They started the, the cars started honking. You know how that shit go. And then another kid came out the blue and, and was like, nah, 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 enough of that, enough of that. So boom, another fight he won. <laughs> like that's two and oh, right? And instead of this other kid, like, yo, like, this would probably be me if I lost the fight too. I would probably want to fight him again. I'm not gonna lie. But he was like, fuck that. Nah, I got to fight him again. And basically, the kid fought him again, and he's, he he went 0-3. I, I forgot what happened in the last fight. But that one with the hands showed that, like, yo, he really had hands. And he played football, too. This kid was a running back. So he will really, when he speared, bro, he really speared him, like, edge off WWE, bro. He came in, mm, speared that motherfucker on the ground. Started pop, 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 pop. I'm every, yo, I'm watching the video like damn, <laughs> no funny shit, but that alone solidified him as someone around the way, do not fuck with this dude, please, like, don't fuck with this dude for your own safety type shit, like, type kind of gassing his shit up, like, and, you know, even me, I'm looking at it like, damn, that dude put some hands on him, like, anybody would look at it like, yo, this dude really put some hands, right, and another story I got, right, is this is in middle school, right? So now we fast forward and like we 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 time traveling back to middle school, right? And it was my man's, right? Ever since I was a kid, this dude stand on business. Like since we was I was a young and like when I was a young bull, I was like second grade, right? This dude, like he had my back no matter what, because I was close with him. I would go to his birthday parties. You know, this was my man's at the time, right? And his dad was a G. I ain't gonna lie. So he was raised a whole different way, like a gangster type. He wasn't a he was a G, but at the same time, he wasn't rolling with gangs for real. He was just like a dude, like, yo, he stood on business. You're like, you're not playing with him. You're not no bitch, like, real shit. So I'm rolling with this dude, and there was a couple times where, you know, like, at this time, like, he would just stick up for me, even if I didn't, like, as a kid, like, he would stick up for me as I'm sticking up for myself, right? Like, if there was a problem with other kids, I would go and, like, address it because that's who I am. But I wasn't moving like how he was, especially at that time. Like, he was just ready down, packed to fight. Like, yo, you want to fight this dude? I'm like, bro, it wasn't that serious. We in the second grade. I'm like, hold on, chill out, bro. So he would, like, it was a few, two occasions where these people came, like, two boys or whatever the fuck, and I had a problem with them. And, like, I'm, like... We going back and forth talking to this, that, and the third, and he just st he's sticking up for me. But once the thing is, like, they I guess they really wasn't scared of me because I was ready to fight too. I was going to fight, but when bro came, they didn't want no problems. I swear to God, yo, it was crazy when he walked to the spot. Like, yo, who's fucking with? Like, as kids, we're like, yo, like he like, yo, we got to fight. We going to fight. Come on, let's get it. These two, bro, they didn't want no smoke, bro. Nothing after that. I swear. Once they seen he was on my side, it was over. That is how much even as a kid the reputation goes, right? So this same kid, right, as I grow older, this still like my dude, you know, in school, you dabbing him up, like, this is my guy. But we kind of, we don't fall off of bad terms. You know, as you grow older, you just outgrow people. And he went a separate different route, like, on some street shit. I'm going more of, like, some sports shit where I'm always playing soccer, football, not football, soccer and basketball at this time. So I'm always focused on that. He focused on, you know, like I said, his father was a G, you know, he was rolling like how he rolled, right? So, there was this one kid that comes to the school, right? And he's older than us, right? He's in the, I'm in the eighth, we're, we're fast forwarding to eighth grade, right? But my boy, like him, he was two years older than me. So, if I was in the second grade, I was eight, he was probably like 10. But when you're a kid, you know that means, you know how that means a lot, where it's like, yo, that dude's 10 years old or 11 years old. Like, you know, that's, that's a lot older, you know? So, uh, you know, as you grow older, like you're 25 and 28, the difference is very rarely. But like, bro, when you're like 
eight and you're like 11 or eight and 10 that's like yo he 10 years old bro like you know he like a he like in the fourth grade bro you in the second grade type shit so you kind of see the game for what it is um so he was older right so let's say for um eighth grade if i was 13 he was probably 15 but he was still like my man like i told you he wasn't really at this time we were not kicking it after school all that because when i was a kid we used to play video games all that shit like that so he was in the eighth grade and i was in the uh uh no we're both in the eighth grade because he got held back two years so he's 15 i'm 13 right so another kid come from another school right and he he on some tough shit. He trying to be tough and this, that, and the third. But everybody knew bro was the toughest in the school. Like, everybody was like, yo, I his name, let's call him Jonathan. They was like, yo, Jonathan is not to be played with. Do not play with him. Everyone knew this. Even, bro, even older heads that like, was like a freshman, sophomore in high school knew not to play with bro. They knew not to play with bro. I never seen him back down from a fight. I never seen him none of that shit. So, when we in kids, um, eighth grade, this dude, some other kid from another school, he wasn't even from like the hood or anything. He he wasn't even from like a like the city or anything. He was just outside the suburbs, but he was fighting. Like we knew like he was known for fighting around his way too. So one day he tried to play Jonathan out. Like he's some lame or some shit. Something happened in recess. You remember when you had recess and shit? Something happened in recess, right? Where they was about to fight and, and the teachers came and like broke it up. But his reputation scared this dude. Like after a while, like after they was about to fight, everyone around the way, right? They, I, um, Jonathan's like, nah, you seeing me after school. We go and get it. Like, you're not running. You're not, you're not going to fight like straight up like this, right? But the other kid was tough too. And he was two years older. So they're the same age. Let's say they both 15. We 13, right? I'm 13, but they both 15. So it's like, oh shit. Like these two, like at the time, just imagine like Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield. That's how, like, yo, that was some shit. Like you got to go see that, right? So we so but prior to that, but when they like, yo, we, we about to get it in. On, we about to get it on after school. Right. All the other kids is telling uh, the kid who came from a new school. Uh, let's call him. Let's let's call him uh, Tom. Uh, let's call him Tom. Everyone's telling Tom like, yo, don't play with him. Like he's not one of them. So like, like, you know, you know, when Mike Tyson got like that, that like, you know, he was scaring everyone. He rocking everyone. Everyone around his way, he he knocking out everyone in boxing shit, bro. Like everyone was scared of him. The boxing community, everyone knew Mike Tyson. Like you don't fuck with Mike Tyson. Imagine him as Mike Tyson, uh, the, the other kid, like Jonathan as Mike Tyson, and everyone's telling Tom like, yo, chill out, bro. Do not fucking play with him. Like you do not want to play with him. Everyone's telling him this, so his reputation garnered his protection, where it was like nobody. I don't want to smoke with you no more, bro. Like you was a big dog. Like, like, you was a big dog, but he ain't know he was a big dog, right? He just starting to come to the school. He's getting, like, starting to know people in this, that, and third. But he tried to play him out like he's a, like, Jonathan's a bitch. But he's not a fucking bitch. So, after school comes, right? And, and we, we, the whole, bro, I promise you, the whole eighth grade. This, like, I told you, this was like a Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield. Like, the biggest fight of the, bro, craziest shit, like, in school. So, we, like, everyone's like, yo, follow Jonathan. So from after school, we seen Jonathan and, and I was cool with him. So I'm rocking right next to him to see what the fuck going on. And I had all like all my other homies in the back. Like, yo, we watching this. Like, we need to see this shit. It was something you had to see type shit as a kid. You feel me? Because, bro, these are two like big because the other kid was his age, too, around the same weight, same height. Everything was perfectly fine, straight up. Like th if there was a fair fight, this was the fairest fight in the world. Like two of the big homies trying to fight type shit. So. We follow Jonathan. Now, Jonathan's like, yo, he trying to call him. Jonathan's like, yo, tell him where the fuck I'm at. I'm going to his house, all right? So we start following Jonathan, and Jonathan's walking towards the dude's house. But like I told you, that reputation scared this motherfucker. He was nowhere to be seen like the other kid. Tom was nowhere to be seen. He ain't want no smoke, bro. Bro, it was crazy. Like, we walking all the way to a different town to go get up so he could fight Jonathan. Or so he could fight, so Jonathan could fight Tom. We walking through the whole town. Everyone's like, yo, where the fuck is Tom? Where is Tom? Bro, the reputation garnered him. It protected Jonathan and scared this dude away. After that, everyone went back to school the next day, the day after, a week later, whatever fuck. Everyone's like, yo, Tom, where you was at? Where you was at, Tom? Oh, this down the third, I had this down the third to do. You know how the excuses come? But that shit, bro, everyone seemed like, nah. 
I, Jonathan got it. Don't nobody want to play with him. You know what I'm saying? And Tom ain't want to play with John. Like, he, Jonathan, he ain't nobody wanted to play with Jonathan after that, right? So this is why when you stand on business, never let anyone play with you, right? Because in this situation, you see a dude standing on business, and then in the other situation, the guy folding under pressure because of the reputation that he had, right? If if you let if you let people play with you, everyone will play with you, right? If there's like a group, right? And there's like, let's say there's 20 people, you, your friends, and everyone. Let's say there's a group of 20 people and 10 of them are your friends, right? So your friends, say you're the bitch out of the group that gets played with, right? They're putting you in a headlock with a nuggie, bitching you, calling you all sorts of names. Yo, you a pussy, this, that, or like, you know, on, like, cause I don't know, other people like let their friends call them that, that no one will call me that. Like, it's none of that, right? So, He's talking crazy. Everyone's playing with your name and this, that, and the third. The other 10 people that are not your friends are more likely, 99.9% .9 likely to play with your name too. So now they see it as, just like as bystanders who don't even pay attention, who are not even like, like, like some of them might be laughing and you got them in the nuggy, like this is the bitch out of the group and shit like that. Everyone is looking at him like, oh, this is the bitch of the group. We could get over on him. We could play with him. And slowly but surely, they will start to play over with you. Right. This old job that I used to work with. Right. This is one dude. He kind of slow, but like he's still like kind of thing. And everyone cracks joke on like one dude started to crack jokes on him. Then everyone started to crack jokes on him. It's like it's human nature. You can't allow this to happen to you. Don't worry about other people. As long as you know this information, you will be fine. You will be good. You won't be the bitch of the group. Just knowing that you have to stand on business. And this doesn't always have to be physical because more times than not, you won't get in physical situations when you sticking up for yourself or like it's just it could be something subtle that you don't like that, you know, you don't like. Right. So say you came in a room and everyone's like, ah, oh, it's this that, and the third like it's a lame dude or like they're kind of cracking jokes or, or they say something that you don't like at that moment. You must say, yo, stop talking like that. Serious looking them in their eyes, no matter if they're laughing, whatever the fuck. You have to, and another thing, you have to be ready for whatever happens if you stand on business. Because some people are like, will really want to get up with you. They'll really try to get up with you. But then other people, like, like the 90% of people, they will be like, oh, okay, okay. Or, you know, they'll be like, what's gotten into you or this, that. But they will know not to play with you from there. So every time, I'm telling you, every time, this has to be a practice. Like, this has to, it will start to flow naturally where. Someone says something, you're like, nah, stop talking. I don't like how you're talking. I don't like how you're talking to me or whatever the fuck. You just must address it. No matter what happens, whether you're in a situation, whatever situation you are and they're trying to play with you, yo, stop talking like that. Whatever, no matter how many people are there, because this is your reputation. Because if they get away with talking to you like that, the rest of the people who are seeing you will talk to you like that the same exact way, maybe even worse. They will see you as a bitch, sniff a bitch, and boom, got you. But if you stand up for yourself, Everyone around there would be like, okay, he not playing with, like, don't play with him. Like, he, even if they see you as in a bad mood, this, that, and the third, you got to be like, you got to be able to stand down business. And when they do see, like, oh, this guy's in the, you know, he, he woke up on the wrong side of the bed or some nut shit, whatever the fuck, they know not to play after that. And if they do, you got to correct it again. And if you, like, like I said, the man of the word, if they keep playing, they do it one, more than once or twice, yo, stop playing with me before shit get critical. Like, or something along the lines of, it doesn't have to be like me. It doesn't have to be like me, but you just got to be able to stand firm on your ground. But look at look how I'm looking at you. I'm serious, motherfucker. Stop talking. You got to be able to really stand on that. You got to really, you know, what I'm saying like be somewhat intimi intimidating so that these people know not to play. And and this goes around too, like where I was like more of the goofy kid when I was a kid. Like I was more of not goofy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a goofy ass dude, but like around my group, we would all throw jokes at each other like all the time. We all you know, wrestle up each other in the stand of third. So, you know, like you can't be the groupie, like the, the goofy guy. Don't be the, the, you know, the class clown. I was a class clown when I was a kid. None, you know, the goofy dude always gets played with. You know, people start to, you're throwing jokes at each other and then they, everyone starts to throw jokes at you guys. And it's like, it's not good for your reputation. Stay away from that. You know, uh, not saying you can't be funny, not saying you can't laugh and have fun or this, that. But when it's time to stand on business, you better be able to do it. You better have that background of being able to fight. Because if this dude wants to take it to that altercation, you must do it. No matter what happens. This is your reputation. You must garner it with your life. Bars. So the last thing I want to say, too, is don't talk as much, right? And like I said, when you talk, you got to stand on it, right? 
So the thing, the power of not talking as much is more so you being able to think and you're not spewing out words and not talking as much is self-control of your brain and knowing when to talk and when not to talk, when to say something and when not to say something, right? So when you don't talk as much, it holds power because you're a listener. When you are listening to a group of people talking, you can spot and identify people. You can look at this dude, okay, just by not even talking, just analyzing, maybe cracking a couple smiles, like, you know, kind of social, uh, like, depending on the situation, right? If I need to gar gather information from people, and there's like a group, and I can identify which one is which, and what person's like this, or this, that, and the third, identifying their personalities, um, it will help you in the future, right? So if I need to do that, and we're in a group, say for instance, we're a group of five people, and everyone's joking around this and that third you're kind of laughing kind of smiling right but you're you know your mission you got to get information from certain people or whatever the fuck right by not talking and listening you have two ears and one mouth listen more than you speak that's how you're supposed to do it anyways so you can gain information from someone and you can kind of know about their personalities straight off of the things that they're talking about you know like for instance if i hear a video gamer talking about video games I know, boom, that's a video gamer. He's talking all these games or he's talking about anime, you know, kind of thing. More so like a soy boy. Boom, I could Spotify. Spot instantly like soy boy kind of dude. You can see that shit. And you look at them and you identify them. You look at their body language, the way that they're swinging. Maybe they're like nervous. Maybe they're like, you know, like this and a third. You got to really realize, okay, this is a scary dude. This is a guy who's tough. This guy, bullshit. This guy, this and a third. And you can garner information just by being quiet. Listening to let the people talk, right? The best way I get wisdom from my old heads is I ask them a question, a difficult question. And I let them speak, but I'm looking at them. And you just letting them communicate and spew out whatever they're feeling. And you will understand a little bit more about this person or a lot about this person. And you will... You, you'll you get the information and the knowledge that you need. If I need to know what's wrong with this, that, and the third in society, and I ask this guy, and I ask a few different guys, all I have to do is be quiet and gather the information and see what's really going on or whatever the fuck, right? The question that you ask, can it can be a whole different question, but if you don't talk as much, you're going to get more information. If you don't talk as much, you're going to be seen more as serious and not to be played with. That is how it goes. When everyone's cracking jokes and laughing, ha, 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 these people aren't serious right this is how you gain the information all this down the third and walk with your shoulders back and head hell high because that's in every video that i must address because that means you're powerful you are seen as better as most people and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with being confident there's nothing wrong with gathering information the only thing is you got to build this reputation and stand on it every single time because when you're seen as weak they will play everyone will play they will all try to play this is the game of how this life should go. Not saying everything has to be physical. Not saying everything has to be like that. But, you know, in this world, it's die. It's get eaten or be eaten. And I, I'd rather get start eating on motherfuckers than be eaten. You feel what I'm saying? But, um, like I said, bro, with Omar, he come through the cut. Everybody running. Nobody want to smoke with Omar. Nobody want to be playing with Omar. Nothing. Nobody want nothing to do with Omar. He come through the cut. You better run. You better run. And like how bro got caught up where he on the headphones like a dumb fuck. And they're like, yo, bro, bro, it's Omar. <sighs> Too late. You got to be gone. Everyone ran. You, he's, he ain't paying attention. So that is how to build uh, your reputation and, you know, garner the strong reputation around your way. And not to be played with because you'd rather not be. you rather be the guy who doesn't get played with than the guy who does get played with. The guy who gets played with doesn't even get respect from women. You know what I'm saying? A woman... I'd rather have a woman respect me than, you know, anything else. Because respect is like, I say something, you're going to do it, motherfucker. Like, we ain't playing that. So, you know, in any situation, you'd rather be the guy who's not getting played with than the guy who gets played with. You can see. Go to your school. Go around your way. These are like weak people. They are actually weak because they can't stand up for themselves, right? When the bully's coming, they're that's a weak person because he has his eyes on a weak. It's like it's like the a lion, right? For instance, a lion has his eyes on a deer, Right, a deer's not gonna do nothing but run. Uh, but if a lion has another eye on another lion, they ain't even gonna battle for real. Like it's rare that those two battle. You know what I'm saying? That's how this shit goes. That's how this world is too, as well. We're animals, nothing different. So, um, I love you guys. If this is real informational, cause this is real game, I'll be trying to talk, bro. I really be talking mad shit.
You know what I'm saying? So just leave it in the comment section. Let me know that you made it to the end, bro. And I love y'all, bro. And I'm going to leave my last video right here for you guys. Don't miss it. All of this shit is gems. All of this shit is truth, bro, too. No lies. So I'm going to leave my last video right here for you. And make sure, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And hit that little bell notification so that every time I post, you get notified, bro. So stay yourself. Stay 300. Whatever you do in life. Trust me. I believe you, bro.